Hey everyone, and welcome to the 21st episode of my Launchpad tutorial series. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to separate the subbase and how to extract the kick using the EQ8 device of Ableton Live 10. I already prepared this segment that we're going to work on. We're going to extract the subbase and the kick from this here example, and we're going to prepare them for use in a live Launchpad cover. Well, first of all, if you don't know what a sub-bass is, it's a low bass sound that usually plays alongside many other instruments. Since it has a low frequency, it's usually really easy to spot right on the waveform. This here segment has a really low frequency mixed into it, while this segment before does not have that frequency mixed in. If we listen to these two segments, we can hear the difference. On this here segment, you can hear a strong sub-bass playing around the low frequencies of the song. What an EQ8 device will allow us to do is it will allow us to filter that low frequency so that we can isolate it, record it, and then play it separately. So this is how I'm going to set up my EQ8. I'm going to turn off all but two of these points. The second point is going to be set to a high cut. And now we're going to position these two points such that we can only hear the sub bass. First, move the first point all the way to the left. And then move the second point around until you can only hear the sub bass in your segment. It helps if you loop the segment and then listen to it over as you make changes. Looks like a value around 200 works for our segment. And now we're going to record this into a separate audio track. Configure the second track to resampling and then start recording. Now let's work a bit on the sub bass. First you want to make sure that your recording is aligned because sometimes when you do record in Ableton it can slightly misalign your sample. So we're going to zoom into the waveform and we're going to try to align it back. This looks pretty lined up. You can check if it's properly aligned by disabling the EQ on the main sample and then adding a utility to your sub bass, inverting it, in order to try and remove the sub bass from the original sample. If it removes properly without any artifacts, that's how you know you've properly aligned the sub bass. And now I'm going to get rid of some of these segments, such as this segment, where I had some of the synth bleeding into our low frequencies. And now I've isolated my sub bass. To get back the original sample without the sub bass, turn on the utility and let's record this into another audio track. At this point, we don't need the original sample anymore, so we can now have the high segment and the low segment separated and ready for sampling. I've now sampled this segment and this is how it sounds. What separating the sub bass allows me to do in this case is to reuse these samples here. Because now I have a section where these are playing without the sub bass and where these are playing with the sub bass. So I can play the sub bass separately on the left side while reusing the same high synths from before. Next I'm going to show you how to extract the kick from any song using a similar method to this one. After extracting the sub bass and then getting the high result from it, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to replace this high result with the main song, so this is the one that I'm going to be applying further modifications to from now on. Let's bring this EQ back. The low frequencies are now gone from this segment, so now let's go ahead and separate the middle and high frequencies from it as well. Now we're going to move the EQ's frequency to around 1kHz in order to separate the mid segment and the high segment of the song. So similarly to this, I will now record the middle segment of the song. And now I'm going to isolate the high result by adding a utility onto that track disabling the EQ on my main segment, and I'm going to create a new audio track to record into. But before recording, I'm just going to make sure that these are all aligned. And now let's record. And now we can get rid of the mid-high mix we have, and now we have our isolated low ends, high ends, and the middle of the song. Let's get rid of the utilities on the first two tracks so we make sure everything is at the correct polarity. And now if we play this back, we should hear the full song again. At this point, check your master. If your headroom doesn't go above zero decibels, that's how you know you did this part correctly. Now what we're going to do is find our kick. Let's use this kick right here. Cut out everything on the left side 
and then also cut the right side to make it shorter and easier to work with. This is going to be the segment that we're extracting our kick from. At this point, you want to make the high end really really short, only to include the initial hit of the kick. Your middle should also be short, but not as short as your high end. And finally, since we've also got sub bass playing at this point in time, you have to guess the point at which your kick's sub bass phase out and the actual sub bass comes into play. I'd guess it's somewhere around this area, and I'm going to remove that and then fade this in a little bit. And now you can play around with the lengths of this until you're satisfied with how your kick sounds. This already sounds like a very usable kick. Of course, you're gonna have to play with this a lot until you get a sound that you like and that works well with your song. And then, after you're done, you can use this kick as your clean kick for inverting it with the song to remove it from your song. That's gonna be it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll answer as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye!